Here is our first look at the Volvo ES90. This car is effectively the successor to the S90 saloon and you may remember the V90 estate. It's a fully electric car this time. That's all it's going to be. So that's why the E in the ES90 name is there. And it's gonna sit alongside the EX90 SUV as the joint flagship model in Volvo's range. I'm gonna run through this video about the design. I'm gonna to talk to you about the different powertrain options. There's three different powertrains available. Then we're gonna have a look inside. Here's everything you'll need to know about the Volvo ES90. Let's start at the front. First of all, it is a little bit wider than the S90 was. Not by much, but it's marginally wider. And at the front, you can see how that design mimics what we've already seen on the EX90. So you get the latest iteration of Volvo's signature Thor's Hammer LED daytime running lights. These actually extend further down here as well. So when you see it all illuminated, it's quite a nice animation when the car is unlocked. And then the rest of the car, well, obviously being electric means it needs to be aerodynamic, but it also doesn't need a big open grill. So at the front, you've got that Volvo iron mark. Then here at the bottom, you've got these electrically operated shutters. These will open or close according to the car's cooling needs. When they're shut, obviously it boosts the car's aerodynamics, which means it can cut through the air more cleanly, therefore extending range and reducing energy consumption. It's quite a contemporary design, but it's still instantly recognizable as a Volvo. I quite like these scallops in the bonnet either side. They kind of give it a bit of a sculpted, planted feel. And you'll notice this LiDAR on top of the windscreen. I'll come back to that in a moment and explain. In terms of overall length, the ES90 is five meters exactly. Now that puts it a little bit longer than the outgoing S90, but it also has a longer wheelbase. That's the distance between the front axle line and the rear axle line. It's 3.1 meters, and that means there's more space in the back for passengers as well. So that's another good thing. Speaking of wheels, you have a choice between 20 and 22 inch wheels, depending on which specification grade you go for. Other things like these flush fitting door handles, which are retracted when the car is locked, help boost the car's aerodynamics. Now, the other thing about this is you'll notice the height. This car sits a little bit taller than before, it's also got more ground clearance and well that's partly because they need to fit the batteries into the floor of this car but also Volvo realizes that a lot of people like SUVs and they like crossovers and they like higher riding cars in general so it's listened and it's kind of applied this to the ES90 so it sits a little bit taller getting in and out is that little bit easier and in theory you'll have a slightly better view of the road ahead. The other thing you'll notice about this is that it's no longer the traditional tree box saloon that the S90 was. Instead, you've got a slightly stretched roof line, slopes a little bit more, and that goes into a lift back design rather than a separate boot lid as before. The effect is obviously there for aerodynamic properties. It improves how the car cuts through the air. It gives it a slightly different side profile and it's slightly shorter rear overhangs. But overall, I think people will still look at this and kind of consider it as a saloon rather than a hatchback. The back, there's the C-shaped rear lights, and you'll notice on either side of the back window, you've got these vertical lights, which again, enhance the car's visibility at night. Normally we see like a third high-mounted brake light. Instead, they put them on either side of the rear windows. Obviously, maybe it's gonna be a more safety feature bias, but uh, yeah, interesting to see. It makes it stand out that little bit more. Other than that, you've got the Volvo word mark across the back and the ES90 badge there as well. When it comes to boot space, the ES90 has 424 liters available. Now that's slightly less than what you got in the S90. That had 461 liters, but still it's not a massive decrease. If you need more space, you can fold down the rear seats. The three individual rear seats fold down and that will give you 773 litres of cargo volume. Also, there's 22 litres of storage in the frunk. Let's get technical and talk powertrains for a moment. This is built on Volvo's SPA2 platform architecture. It's the same as the EX90 SUV, but the difference with this is that this uses 800 volt electrical architecture rather than 400 volts. That means it can charge a lot faster. 
I'll talk about that in just a moment. You have three different powertrains available. Starts with a rear wheel drive. 333 horsepower. You've then got a dual motor, twin motor is what Volvo calls it, with 449 horsepower and a range topping twin motor performance model that had 680 horsepower. That will accelerate from 0 to 100 in just four seconds. And all versions of the ES90 have a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. Now, when it comes to charging, as I mentioned, this is capable of utilizing the latest 350 kilowatt chargers that are available. They're not available everywhere, but they are coming and being rolled out across motorway networks and other major hubs. Thanks to that 800 volt architecture, it means you'll be able to add 300 kilometers of range in just 10 minutes with this car. And going from 10 to 80% will take just 20. I mentioned the LiDAR on top of the windscreen. And that's just part of a suite of safety systems that are equipped with the ES90. You also get seven cameras, including here under the rear view mirrors, and you've got 12 ultrasonic sensors dotted throughout the car that continually monitor its progress and its surroundings as all part of Volvo's pilot assist driving system. Inside the ES90, it's the kind of premium quality that we've come to expect from Volvo. I wouldn't say it's exactly a minimalist design, but it's definitely got a lot of Scandi cool going on here. First of all, the seats, well, even just sitting into this initially, it feels extremely comfortable. And Volvo, in my opinion, do some of the best seats in the business. And this already feels like they're going to stay true to that. The driving position itself, there's a lot of adjustability here. The steering wheel, it's a nice round design, none of this flat bottom nonsense and you can actually electrically adjust it. Now, the thing is, everything is done on this 14.5 inch touchscreen. So if you do want to adjust it, you'll have to do it this way. You go in and then once you get into the mode to adjust the steering wheel, you can then use the buttons here on the wheel to adjust it in and out. And you've also got reach and rake as well. So you can get it exactly where you want it. Now, you're probably not gonna do that all the time, so it might seem like a bit of a faff, but you're unlikely to have to change that a great deal. The rest of the layout, well, you've got nice column stalks here on either side, so all of your drive selection is done on the right side, and your lights and indicators are on the left-hand side. In front, you have a slender nine inch across the diagonal driver instrument display. There's also a full color head up display. And as I mentioned, you've got this very stylish looking 14.5 inch portrait style touchscreen. This is a Google based operating system. So it means you've got things like Google Maps and your Google Assistant already baked in. So it reacts very, very quickly. And it can also do useful things like if you have a destination set in to your maps, it will show you how much range you're gonna have left when you get there. And, or if you need to charge along the way, it will pick out the most efficient places to stop and charge. That's also a very, very useful system. Other things, well, everything is controlled off this. So if you do wanna open the glove box, for example, you can do it like so and then pop it closed, but there's not a lot of physical buttons back here. That's really the only thing that some people might find a little bit missing in that respect. You've got all the usual other conveniences. You have a wireless charging pad. You've got storage in here. You've a few cup holders. There's also USB-C charge ports. You've got more space underneath here as well. So you've got a little bit of storage in there. And overall it looks very, very nice. The quality feel is really top notch. This is easily up there with the best that Mercedes, BMW, Audi have to offer. In fact, in some ways, it actually surpasses what they're doing. Even though it's got all this nice materials, there's a lot of sustainable materials as well. So Volvo offers a Nordica material upholstery, which is made from recycled plastic bottles and other offcuts like that. And you've got a lot of nice contrast and colors. I really like this kind of pale finish here. It works really well with a little bit of metal bright work here. And if you look right at the end, you've actually got a small little indent here, which has the Swedish flag in it too. Very, very nicely done. And if you're an audiophile, for example, you can get 
a top of the range Bowers and Wilkins sound system. It's got Dolby Atmos inside, 25 speakers throughout the whole interior. So you can hear all your favorite music in the best possible quality. But of course, I mentioned earlier, this has a long 3.1 meter wheelbase. That means there's more room for those in the back. So let's have a look in the rear seats and see what that's like. In the back, there is acres of room back here. This feels like a limousine back here. You have so much space. I mean, this is the normal driving position for me and look how much space I have for my legs. I can get my feet in underneath the seat in front if I do want to stretch out that little bit more. I've got tons of space here. This is extremely comfortable. For reference, I'm pretty average height, I'm five foot nine. And I've still got loads of headroom here. Obviously you've got this full panoramic glass roof as well. So it adds an awful lot of light, floods the cabin inside. And with this lighter colored material, it does feel very, very spacious back here. Now this is obviously designed for three people across the back, but as is often the case, if you're in the middle seat, you are getting the short straw on this. Um, it's obviously a lot firmer, a lot narrower. It's really designed for two people if you want to have true comfort back here. And of course, if you don't want to utilize that middle seat, well, you can actually pull down this center armrest. Very, very nice, very broad. You've got room in here for extra storage. You want to put odds and ends in here. You can also then open up the cup holders. And again, I mentioned the quality, like everything, even how it does that, it's so nicely damped. It all feels very high end back here. Really, really nice in that respect. Um, other things you can get like USB-C charge ports in the back. You've got climate control uh, in the rear here as well. So you've got heated and ventilated outer rear seats in this. You can adjust the cabin temperature as well. This has a four zone climate control. So me, my middle, my occupant here beside me and the two other people in front can all have different temperature settings according to their preference. But yeah, very, very comfortable back here. Decent size rear windows. You've got plenty of big door bins here, a nice comfortable armrest. This is a very, very nice place to be transported in. And Volvo says this is one of its quietest cabins it has ever made. So that also means it's gonna be that bit more relaxing. One other thing, and it's again, a big benefit of this being available with all wheel drive, but the fact that it's electric means you've no big transmission tunnel down the center. That means all of this space here is pretty much an entirely flat floor all the way across. So that's another benefit too. And for those with families, well, both of the outer rear seats here can also accommodate Isofix mounting points for child seats. So that's our first look around the new Volvo ES90. It will arrive in Ireland in around the first quarter of 2026 and all three powertrains will be available. Pricing will be announced closer to that time. If you wanna know more about the Volvo ES90, head over to our website. It's completecar.ie. You'll find it linked in the description below and it's a great resource for finding your next new car as well as keeping up with all the latest car news.